132b. We're holding by the word tenach, which is about 18 lines up. The line starts with Alpha Peshation Beharis. We're talking about um, doing the bris when on the Arla, there was Tsaras. And this prohibition to cut off Tsaras. But we said we learned from the word, the Sara Lasai, that you cut off the foreskin even though there's Tsaras on it. In other words, the mitzvah of Mila pushes off the Tsaras. Now, the Gemara over here says, Tainach Kadl. This is all good when we're dealing with an adult. By an adult, is a pasuk that says that if there is a male um, that doesn't have a bris, he doesn't cut off the foreskin, then he gets cut off. So we know we're dealing with an, with an adult that didn't take care of his, uh, his bris. He didn't take care to have it. So there it has the extra word basar. It could have said, asher la yimal ar lasay, but it says basar. So there we understand that we cut off the, the uh, foreskin, even though there's tzeras. That extra word teaches me that. Kat namik basar. By the child, it says, um, ashmini yimal basar lasay. If the bris is on the eighth day, it also says basar al lasay. Could have said yimal ar lasay. It says basar, there's an extra word. That tells me that you cut off the foreskin, even though there's tzeras on it. What about if he's not an adult? He's not an adult, he's also not a child. And on the eighth day, he's in the middle. He's on the ninth day from nine days old until um, right before 13. What about there? Over there, at the, I don't have a special Pasuk that tells me that he needs to have to cut the, the, the foreskin. I have a pasuk that says Yimal lachem kol zachar. Every male should be circumcised. But I don't have the, the word basar in that pasuk. It doesn't say Yimal basar arla kol zachar. It says Yimal kol zachar. There's no extra word. That's a problem. How do I know that I can cut off if it's basically the term, the, the Gemara term could be Mila shleib bismana. How do you know that Mila shleib bismana on a child? Mila not in its time. You can cut off the foreskin as well. So, how do I know if he's in the middle? Not an adult, and he's not on the eighth day. Comes from the combination. Binaya means from between both of them. I can't, I can't um, learn from the Gadol um, because the Gadol gets karas. doesn't tell me that a 12 year old gets karas. You can't learn from a child of eight days old because that's a bris on the right time. Over there it says basar. How do you know that someone that's from nine until 12 and uh, in 350 uh, and 64 days, let's say, um, how do you know that, uh, that you cut off the, the foreskin even though this to us? So we do Hatzad HaShavah Shabbat to the common factor between them, the common denominator, between an adult that needs his breast and a child that's on, that gets a breast. Well, I look at both of those, and I learn from them that you have to do a breast, even if there's teras on the foreskin. That um, is the opinion of Abaya. How do I know that I cut off Tsaras, even though it doesn't say the word Basar? I learned that me Binaya. I learned it from the combination. Now we have the opinion of Rava. Rava says, Rava, I'm a Mila Bismana Daicha, Leitzricha Kra. I don't need a Pasak that Mila Bismana is Daicha. What Rav is gaining over here is he's gaining an extra word to tell me that Mila Shalai is Daicha. You know, he's not going to learn me Benaya. He's going to learn from the Pasuk. I bet we use the Pasuk. He says, no, you don't need the, the what you use the Pasuk for, you didn't need it. It was unnecessary. 
how do we know that Mila Bizman is Deicha? Um, he says, that I know, Mikal That I know naturally. It's always going to push off uh, Tsaras. In other words, if I do a bris and there's Tsaras on the foreskin, that I cut off that Tsaras, that I know from Mikal Vachemer. Ma Shabbos Techamira. If you do a bris on Shabbos, Shabbos is much more stricter than Tsaras. Tsaras the Kolskin, for sure you do a bris when there's Tsaras. For, the, for sure you cut it off. So now I have the word basar. What does the word basar tell me? I didn't need it that I can do a bris when there's tzara. When there's tzaras, I use it for milas leibes mana. Why do I need a pasuk for leibes mana if bris is so important? The Torah says because leibes mana doesn't have the kalvachimer. Leibes mana doesn't push off Shabbos. The Kavachim was if a bris pushes off Shabbos. So for sure should push off Taras. But that's only Mila Bismana pushes off Shabbos. Mila Shalei Bismana, if it's on the ninth day, it's, I don't perform it on Shabbos. So that being the case, I use the Pasuk of Bissar to tell me Mila Shalei Bismana is done, um, even though there's Taras there. Cut off the Taras. Yeah, there was a rabbi that said that um, uh, cancer is, is uh, tzaras, and you're not allowed to do procedures to take it off. Um, that's what he claimed. He said that that's only if it's external, because um, but uh, tzaras on the inside, you're allowed to cut off if it's on places that you can't see. That's what he claimed. <laughs> not a doctor's uh, <laughs> thing. Anyway, that's what. Uh, okay. Amalei Rav Safra Lerava. Rav Safra said to Rava, Rava's claim over here is that I learn it from a Pasuk because I have a Kalvachimer for the original bris that it cuts off to Ras. says, Mimai the Shabbos Chamir. Where do we know that Shabbos is stricter? How do you know that Shabbos is stricter? Maybe Tzeras is more stricter than Shabbos. Remember, we had this logic yesterday that if all the Kainim have Tzeras, then you don't do the Avaida. That means Tzeras pushes off the Avaida. But Avaida, the service of the temple. But the service of the temple, I should be allowed to do on Shabbos. That means that the service of the temple is stronger than Shabbos. Taras is stronger than the service of the temple. So what am I left with? Taras is stronger than Shabbos. So the service pushes off Shabbos and Taras pushes off the service. So what does that tell me? The Kalvachim is gone. You tried to say that if Mila pushes off Shabbos and for sure pushes off Taras, it's not a good Kalvachim. It pushes off Shabbos, but it doesn't push off Taras. Therefore, I need a pasuk to tell me Bissar, to tell me that I, t- that I need a special pasuk to tell me that Mila Bismana, I, I do a, a circumcision, even though there's Taras on the foreskin, which is a prohibition to remove. I don't have a Kalvachimer, that if you do a bris on Shabbos, then for sure you should do a bris when there's Taras. Taras is stricter than Shabbos. Rav responds to Rav Safra. That's not, that's not a, a good question. He says, Hasam lav mishim Over there, when you say that Tsaras doesn't push off the Avaida. I'm sorry, Tsaras pushes off the Avaida. That I don't do the service because I have Tsaras. And I, I don't say cut off the Tsaras. Um, I don't say that. That's because Elamishim the Gavra de Lechazi. Even if you cut off the Tsaras, it's not going to help. You still won't be able to do the Avaida. Because really, Shabbos is stronger than, than Tzaras. Ah, you just told me that Tzaras pushes off Avaida and Avaida pushes off Shabbos. That means Tzaras is stronger than Shabbos. He says, no, it doesn't mean anything. Over there, I don't, do, I don't cut off the Tzaras to be able to do the Avaida because even if I cut off the Tzaras, I still can't do the Avaida. The Maes the Gemara says, why not? Cut it off and then he'll do the service. He says, no, but he needs to go to the mikveh. And it seems pretty obvious here 
that the fact that today we're going to cut off the tzaras, he's going to go to the mikveh, probably has to heal, he's going to go to the mikveh, and then tomorrow he's going to be able to do the avayda, that's not a reason to, to push it off. That's not a reason to cut off the tzaras because of tomorrow's avayda. If it would be done today, then good. Tina, okay. So, what we're seeing here is that the Kalvachimer is back. That Mila is stronger than Shabbos, and for sure it's stronger than Taras. I, Taras is stronger than Shabbos. So that's not really a... It's bothering me. That this, I mean, we've been talking now about Taras and Shabbos now for at least a, a daf. Right. Every time this example has been brought, no one's brought up saying, oh, but he can't be do the Avodah on Shabbos anyway, so the example is no good. It's only now they've, that this, they woke up. Oh, this is the first time this, that we thought about this, that a that Gavr Lechazi, because, he need, because he's tummy? I don't know. Is what you're asking? Yeah. <laughs> on the top of the page, we mentioned this. We said, Dilma Mishum the Gavr Lechazi. We asked the question. In other words, when, when we quoted that Brisa, and it says, or maybe not, Ayenai. And we said, well, what was he thinking originally? And then what was he thinking by the Ayenai? We, we brought both of these, um, both of these uh, possibilities, that maybe Tsaras is stronger than Shabbos, and maybe not. Maybe the reason why Tsaras isn't cut off is because it won't even help. No, but about the avoid I'm talking about. Yeah. It's saying, that, str- it's saying that he won't be able to do the avoid on Shabbos anyway, this last piece. Yeah. Um, this is the first, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah so let me just clarify that. We said that Tsaras is stronger than Avaida because you don't cut off the Tsaras in order to be able to do the Avaida. That means that that's that. Uh, now, Avaida is stronger than Shabbos. That means you do the Avaida on Shabbos. Uh, so what does that mean? Is that Taras is stronger than Aveda, and Aveda is stronger than Shabbos, and Taras is stronger than Shabbos. So the fact that Mila is Deich Shabbos doesn't tell me that Mila is Deich Taras. Taras is strong. Now, it doesn't mean that that Taras was on Shabbos. It just means that the Taras is stronger than Aveda, and uh, that Taras was in the week or whatever. It doesn't, it doesn't tell me Taras was on Shabbos. It's just telling me that Taras is strong. Okay, now, the Gemara says that maybe Taras is not really stronger than Shabbos. Maybe it's the fact that I don't cut off the Taras to do the Avaida is because even if I cut off the Taras, I still can't do the Avaida right away because he needs to go to the mikveh. And the mikveh is only going to work by the hair of Shemesh and then, uh, then the following day. Okay. Uh, if, that's, if that's the case, then which type of Kayan, we're talking about a Kayan that has Taras or all the Kayanim, let's say, have Taras and they can't do the Avaida. And even if you cut it off, they still can't do that. Right? So the Gemara has an interesting question here. It says, There's a possibility that someone has Tzaras and he's still tar. This possibility is like if the Tzaras spreads over the whole body, then he's not tummy. Or if the shade of the Tzaras wasn't the shade that's tummy, it didn't have the right, uh, the, the right hairs that are growing inside it, or whatever the, the qualifications are to make him tummy. So, if he cuts off that saras, there's a huge uh, skin transplant uh, if it's over his whole body, or maybe it's just uh, if he cuts off all the saras, so he's not tummy. He should be able to do that vida right away. Now, you have to accept one point here that's a kayan with saras that's not tummy is not allowed to do the avayda. Cutting it off would make him do the avayda. Now, where we know that from, that a kayan that has saras that's not tummy can't do the avayda, I'm not really sure. But that's clearly what the Gemara is suggesting. Um, quotes, Rashi quotes a Sifri that says that. Okay. So even it's though we had, it's considered saras that's tar. So he has a, a bayak or whatever, sapachas, something, but then it didn't grow, it didn't spread, it didn't have the things. He has those first stages. Or it was par, uh, parcha bakula. 
or it's spread over the whole body. But it's a situation where he's tar. So the Gemara says, one second. Over there, you should be able to cut off the tzara. If you want to say that tzaras is is not as strong as, if you want to say that Saras is really stronger than Shabbos, we wanted to say that, we wanted to say the opposite. We wanted to say that really Shabbos is stronger than Saras. So why doesn't the Saras, why don't you remove the Saras to be able to do that by the because Avaita is stronger than Shamas. We said because it doesn't help. So, but I'll give you a case where it does help. What's that case when he was never Tame? Because the Tsaras was Tar. The Gemara says, Tainach Nagayim Tameim. Nagayim Tameik Lameimar. Over there, he would be Chazi. The Gavra would be Chazi. The man would be fit to do the Avaita. And nevertheless, you don't say to cut it off. It must be. That Saras is really stronger than Avaida, which is really stronger than Shabbos. It's a Kashan Rava, you lose the Kalvachimer. The fact that Mila pushes off Shabbos is no Raya that it for sure pushes off Saras. Elam Ravashi, Hecham Rinan Dasya Sevadachi Laisa say, Ravashi says that when do you say that Shabbos is stronger than Saras? Even though Taras pushes off the Avaida, that's, uh, but that's all of this has to do with an assay being Dei say A positive command pushes off a negative command. When do I say that? I would say that if I'm doing a circumcision, and on the circumcision there's Taras, on the foreskin there's Taras, Inami Tzitzis Vikalayim, or else. I'm um, putting on my wool a thread of, of tcheles in my linen tzitzis. To be in the misaka lav, at the time when you're uprooting the negative prohibition, in other words, you're doing the negative prohibition, either you're putting the tzitzis into the, 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 the shatnas, or you're cutting off the tzaras, at that very moment, you're fulfilling the positive command. But over here, when you're doing the lav of cutting off the tsaras, so that the kayan should be able to do the avayda, like you still didn't do the avayda. In other words, when it's simultaneous, so then I say, I say, as they I say. But if it's not simultaneous, if you cut off the, the tsaras, even though he was tar, and he can immediately go and do the avayda, but it's not simultaneous. And so, therefore, I don't say I say as the Yichalais say. So, therefore, the Tzaras doesn't push off the Avaida. I don't cut off the Tzaras. Therefore, the Tzaras does push off the Avaida. I don't cut off the Tzaras. The Avaida doesn't push off the Tzaras. So, we're saying this is not a stringency of Tzaras. This is just that it, the, the I say the say doesn't work. This supports Rava. Because Rabbi said that Shabbos is stronger than Saras. Okay, now the Gemara says, This is really a Machlekes Tanoim. How do I know that Mila Bismana, a bris on the eighth day, could be performed even though there's Saras on the, on the foreskin? According to Rava, I don't need a Pasuk for that. And according to Rav Safra, you need a Pasuk for that. Rav said, I have a Kavachimer for that. If Mila is done on Shabbos, it could be done on the uh, on Tsaras. And Rav Safra said, no, you need a Pasuk for that because Tsaras, uh, uh, there's no Raya, just the fact that you do a bris on Shabbos. So it's Ditanya was taught in a Brisa. The Brisa quotes the Pasuk. It says, Basar, Basar Alasai. Even though there's a a baheras, which means a spot of leprosy, you still do the bris. We're on top of Kuflam and Gimel. That's the words of Rabbi Yeshe. In other words, Rabbi Yeshe holds like Rav Safra. That, Rav Safra holds like Rabbi Yeshe. That I need a Pasuk to tell me that I can do a bris, even though there's Tsaras on the foreskin. Rabbi Yaina Sanaimer, Einetzarech. Says, you know, Rabbi Yaina says, I don't need a Pasuk. 
Shabbos Chamura, Daicha. If a bris pushes off Shabbos, you do a bris on Shabbos. Tzeras Lekoskin, for sure, it pushes off Tzeras. Shabbos is much more strict than Tzeras. That means I don't need a Pasuk to tell me that I can do a bris on, when there's Tzeras. So what do you use the Pasuk for? This is Rav's opinion. I use the Pasuk to tell me Mila Shleibis Mana, which doesn't push off Shabbos. Okay, so we have a Mechlekes Tanoim. The Rav and Rav Safra is really a Mechlekes Tanoim. The Gemara here isn't asking Lema Ketanoi because they, this was not quoted as the statement of a Machlekes. This was a conversation. A Lema Ketanoi is when the, the, I have a statement of Amiram. Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Yechanan says this, and Rav says that, or Shmuel says this, or whatever. Here, let's see, Rav says this, Rav Safra says that. That would be a statement. Then the says, what are they talking about? It's Machlekes Tanoi. Why do I need them to come in and start discussing this again? That's a lame katana. The Gemara says, no, this, they're not saying the same opinions as those tonight. But over here, we had a conversation where Rav made a claim. Rav Safran made a claim back. And uh, they're discussing this. The Gemara says, well, actually, you should know that this is a, this is really a machlek is It's not saying it as a question. It's saying it as, um, as a support to what they're saying. Amar Mar. The master taught Basar, Basar, Afbishesham Beheres, even though there's leprosy on the, on the foreskin, Yimal, you still do the circumcision, the Rabbi Yesha. The Gemara says, Halam Alikra, why do I need a Pasuk? That I'm allowed to do a bris, even though there's Tzeras on the foreskin. What was his intention? To cut off the Tzeras? No, his intention was to do the bris. The fact that the Tzeras is coming off, that's a Dabr Shana Miskavan. He wasn't intending for that. The Gemara says, the Dabr Shana Miskavan Mutter. It's a Dabr Shana Miskavan of a Dabr Shana Miskavan Mutter. It's totally permissible. That wasn't his intention. That happens to happen on the side that the Tsaras comes off. The Gemara says, I'm Rabbiya. It's interesting. From this is a Raya that Dabr Shana Miskavan applies to other halachas besides for Shambas. Could have said it's only a din in Malachas Machsheves. It's a din in Shambas. Here you see it it's, uh, replies to the whole Torah. I wasn't intending to cut off the Tzeras. So I'm Rabbi Abayi says, Le'nitzchel Rabbi Yehuda. We're going according to the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda that argues. Damer Dabr Shein HaMiskaven is Aser. He holds that Dabr Shein HaMiskaven is, uh, if you don't intend, it's still prohibited. The fact is, you did the, you did the Avera. You cut it off. Therefore, you need a Pasuk. Okay, so we had a question and an answer. Why do you need a pasuk? It's a davar shenim miskaven. We ask the question according to Reb Shimon. We answer that it's going according to Rabbi Yehuda. That holds that without intention, it's still prohibited. Rav Amar, that's it was a, a bias answer so far. Rav says, "I feel the Reb Shimon." No, it could be Reb Shimon's opinion. the Reb Shimon, This is like cutting off the head of a chicken and claiming that I didn't want it to die. I just wanted to have a head. To be, so the kids could play with their head like a little um, puppet. So that's not considered Dabr Shein Miskaven because that's inevitable that it's going to die. So over here, you're cutting off the Tzeras. It's inevitable that the Tzeras is going to come off. I know you didn't intend that. You intended to do a circumcision. But if it's inevitable, um, Rav Shimon agrees that it's, that it's prohibited. So therefore, I need a Pasuk. The Gemara is, doesn't let go of this. The Gemara says, why did Abaya have to answer that this goes according to the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda? Abaya holds of this, that if it's inevitable, it's not considered the Dabr Shein Miskavan, it's called the Psikresha. Psikresha is the term that's something that's inevitable to happen. It's uh, prohibited, even though it wasn't intended. But Abaya and Rabbi both say the same thing. So why did Abaya have to answer that this is the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda? He knows that Rabbi Shimon agrees. The Gemara says, Basar the Shami Mirava Savra. Yeah, this is where it all happened. Where does Abaya and Rava say the statement after Rava ex- ex- explained to him this point right here? As we've had this quote probably five times at least in the Masech the Shabbos already. Where did it all happen? It happened here. Because Rava tells Abaya that Reb Shimon would be Maida. Abaya gave a different answer. 
Rava tells Abaya, Abaya accepts it. And after this, then they start, Abaya and Rava both agreed. He accepted it from Rava. This is all that, this is the, the basis for that story. Okay. Ikadamasni laha da Abaya bravaha. Some say that this, this conversation between Abaya and Rava, if it's Rabbi Yehuda or Rabbi Shimon, was actually on a different source. It says, You should guard the Tsaras very much. And to do, there's two ways of reading this Gemara. Rashi reads it. Um, You're allowed to wrap a rope around your foot, uh, or you're allowed to put a beam on your shoulder, even though there's terrace on your foot and there's uh, terrace on the shoulder. Um, even though that rubbing it against the beam may rub it off, or rubbing it against that rope may rub it off. Why? Because it's unintentional. If it comes off, it comes off. So the Gemara asks, Why do you need a Pasuk to tell me that says that means you're allowed to go around your work and do whatever you want, even though you have Tzeras. And now Tzeras has certain restrictions. You have to follow the, the rules of Tzeras. But it doesn't mean you have to stop all the things that you do. You're allowed to put ropes around your foot if that's what uh, you dress. You're allowed to put this beam on your shoulder if that's, I mean, you have to be out of the city or whatever. But, um, but that you're allowed to do. It doesn't say you're not allowed to do that. So, the Gemara says, why do you need a Pasuk to tell me that you're allowed to do it? It's a Davashin Miskavan. The Davashin Miskavan is mutter. He's not in, he doesn't intend to remove the Tzaras. Amar Abay Leinitzchel or Rabbi Yehuda. Abayah says, we're following Rabbi Yehuda. The Amar Davashin Miskavan also that Rabbi Yehuda holds a Davashin Miskavan. If it's not intentional, it's still prohibited. The fact is, you did the act. Rav Amar Afilotim or Shimon. Rav says, it could be Rab Shimon. Even Rab Shimon that holds it's permissible, but here we would hold it's forbidden without the Pasuk. The Pasuk brings it back that it's permissible. Why? Because Reb Shimon agrees if it's inevitable, like cutting off the head of a chicken, it's not going to die. Of course it's going to die. So if you put this board on the shoulder, of course it's going to come off. The tzeras. It's a heavy beam and it's, uh, the friction is going to rub the skin. It's going to take it off. It's inevitable. Why didn't Abayi answer that? Abayi Leslie Aisvara, Abayi doesn't hold of this. Abayi of Rava Damri Tavayi Meidur Abshim Sekresha Leyamas Abayi agrees to that. Abayi and Rava both say the same thing. The Gemara says Labasa Dashami Mi Rava Savra. After Abayi heard from Rava, he accepted it. So this discussion Abayi and Rava, if it's the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda or if it's the opinion of Rabbi Shimon, and then Abayi accepts Rava's claim that it's even the opinion of Rabbi Shimon, has two possible sources. One could be Tsaras on the foreskin. The other one could be putting a beam on, on, uh, on, your, on the shoulder that has tzeras. The Gemara now asks, what was Abaya thinking? Abaya said that this b'risa goes according to Reb Shimon. I'm sorry, Reb Yehuda. Abaya says the b'risa goes according to Reb Yehuda. And then Rav tells him, no, it could go according to Reb Shimon. When Abaya answered that, that it goes according to Reb Yehuda, so we're going back to the b'risa that spoke about cutting off the tzaras at a circumcision. So I have a pasuk of besar that tells me that I'm allowed to cut it off. We asked, why do you need a pasuk? It's davrashin miskaven. So by answers according to Rabbi Yehuda. The Gemara asks now, Abaya left a big gap in the understanding of this pasuk. He explained it only according to Rabbi Yehuda. What would Abaya do with the opinion of Reb Shimon that holds Davashin Muskavan is mutter, and I don't need the word Basar to tell me that it's permissible to cut off the Tsaras? It wasn't intentional. He was intending to do the to do a circumcision. Now I know Abaya switched and then said it's according to Reb Shimon as well. But before he switched, before he accepted Rabbi's answer, what was he thinking? It's, we're talking about a person that Mamish says, Abaya would say that I need the Pasuk to tell me that the person says 
I'm going to cut off the tzaras. He didn't say I'm going to do a circumcision. He said, I'm going to cut off the tzaras. So then we say that it's permissible because he's doing the circumcision. He says clearly what he's doing. It's not Aina Miskavan. He announced it. It's very interesting because Abaya could have said, he said, why is it permissible? Uh, why, why do you need a Pasuk to tell me that it's permissible? It's permissible anyway. It's never seen a miskavan. He said, no, it's according to Rabbi Yehuda. According to what we're just answering, he doesn't have to say it's according to Rabbi Yehuda. Could he say it's talking about the guy claims that he's a miskavan? Could have, Abaya could have answered different. Taisus asked this question. Boimir Lakatz. So the Brysa fits more with the Eina Miskavan. So we wanted to say it's Rabbi Yehuda. Okay. The Gemara now says, Tenach, all of this is going to fit well if you have the word Basar to tell me that it's permissible to cut off, to cut off the Tzaras. Tenach Gadol. By Gadol, by a, an adult, it says, Ba'aral Zachar Shaliyim al Basar al It has that word. Katan Mayak what about by a child? Now, we're thinking that the adult is telling the male, or is, maybe he's doing the bris himself, he's saying, I want to cut off the tsaras. We're trying to figure out what the word Bissar is. Bissar is telling him that he's allowed to cut it off, even though he's mechavan to cut it off. But by a child, there's no kavana. So Gemara answers right away. Um, but the father says that he's, gonna, he's intending to cut off the, the spot of his child. So there's kavan on the father. The Gemara says, I know you're allowed to do it because it says the word basar, you're allowed to cut it off. However, even though you're mechavan, but you should still try to get someone else to do it because if you get someone else to do it, then he's not mechavan. He's not trying to heal his son from Tiras. The other person would be trying to do the mitzvah of Mila. It's a big schos to do the mitzvah. So you get someone else to do it, so you don't have the problem of kavana. Anywhere where you have a positive command and a negative command. If you're able to fulfill both, that's much better. And vimlav, but if not, then let it, let the yase push off the lesase. Here he has a positive command of, of a bris, of a circumcision. He has a negative command of don't cut off the tzaras. So the asay, the positive command, pushes off the negative command and he does the circumcision. Now, we were, this, we're bringing this in as a question because we're saying that what do I need the word besar for? According to Reb Shimon, according to Abaya. According to Reb Shimon, it's permissible because he, he didn't intend to cut off the tzaras. He says, I need it because the person said that I'm doing it on purpose. I'm doing it on purpose. So we said, but one second, you should, you're supposed to try to get someone else to do it. So how are you answering that the person's claiming that he's doing it on purpose? You're getting someone else to do it. That's what you're supposed to do. My answer is the lekka When no one else is there and the person claimed that he's doing it on purpose, then I would need, and all this is all the havamina, then I would need the word besar um, to teach me, even though you're mechaven, that um, that uh, it still needs to be, it's still permissible because of besar. Okay, now we're going back to bris and Shabbos. Amar Mar was taught before. Yom tov ena doicha ela bismana bilvad. The bris only puts, pushes off yom tov if the bris is on the eighth day. Minani mili, how do you know that? If the bris is on a later time, for whatever reason, the baby was ill or something, postpone the bris. So then you do, you don't do it on Shabbos. You can't postpone it to, to Shabbos.
from Chizkia. Chizkia says, B'chein Tana de Bechis, it was taught in the Yeshiva of Chizkia. Where do we know this from? You learn like this. Some strange uh, sources, right? like from way out. Amakra, it says, the Pesach says, like Sir Menorad Biker. By the current Pesach, you're not supposed to leave the meat over till the morning. And if you do leave it over till the morning, whatever's left over till the morning has to be burnt. Now, the Gemara says that there's an extra word, Ad Biker. It says, don't leave over till the morning. And what is left over till the morning is burnt. You could just say it's burnt. Don't leave over till the morning. And what's left over is burnt. You don't have to say what's left over till the morning. So, Shein Talmud Leimer Ad Biker. You don't need that extra verse that says Ad Biker. Ma Talmud Leimer Ad Biker. What is the verse teaching me? It's very interesting. What's left over till the morning is not burnt that morning. It's burnt, it's burnt on the following morning. Why can't I burn it on Yom Tov? The carbon Pesach, on, on the 14th, the carbon Pesach is offered. 14th by night, the 15th is Pesach. That's when I eat it. That's the Seder. The following morning, it's all too late. Anything that's left over needs to be burnt. Don't burn it. Yeah, you need to wait another day. Why can't I burn it as well? The sacrifice came from yesterday. You don't have to burn it today. If you don't have to burn it today, then you burn it tomorrow. What we're learning is that the Pasuk tells me that I'm not allowed to burn the sacrifice on the day because this is something that came from a weekday sacrifice, yesterday sacrifice, even though it's not Shabbos, it's Yom Tov. But nevertheless, I can't burn it on Yom Tov. I have to wait for the following day. So too, Mila, Shalai Bismana, a bris, um, that's not in its right time. I, could, I, I don't perform it on Shabbos. Its time was on a weekday. I have to do it on a weekday. Shabbos is not its, uh, its exact time. It's Shalai Bismana. Okay. That was the opinion of Chizkiah. Abai Amar, Abayah says, Amar Kro, Eila Shabbos b'Shabbat, Eila Shabbos b'Shabbat, Eila Shabbos b'Shabbat, Eila Shabbos b'Shabbat, Eila I'm allowed to burn the limbs of a uh, sacrifice. If it's on Shabbos, I, I'm allowed to burn it on Shabbos. But if it's a weekday sacrifice, I'm not allowed to burn it that evening on Shabbos. So if that's the case, then Mila Shlebizmano also I'm not allowed to do on Shabbos because it's a weekday thing. Rav Amar Amakra, Hu Levadi Yaselechem, Hu Machshirin. Talks about what you're allowed to do on Yom Tif. It says that you're allowed to do work, certain types of work um, that's melech ha'zeichel nefesh, specific things. It says this alone you're allowed to do. So when it says who, this alone you're allowed to do, it's telling me only a, a, a bris itself, but not the preparations for the bris. Levadai, alone, that's coming to tell me, it's coming to tell me that I don't do a bris that's not in its proper time. Now the Gemara says, the asimi kalvachaymer. Because I could have had a kalvachaymer that tells me that I do do a bris on Shabbos. What would the kalvachaymer be? That Saras pushes off the Avaida, Avaida pushes off Shabbos, and a bris is performed on Shabbos. So the bris should also push off Taras. Oh, it's a different Kavachimer. If ter, it's the Kavachim goes like this. If Taras is so strong, if Taras is so strong, that pushes off the Avaida, and Avaida pushes off Shabbos, so Mila Shalai Bismana, pushes off Tzaras. Why? Because if someone uh, has Tzaras on his foreskin, he's allowed to cut it off. Even Shalei Bismana, that we learned from, um, we learned from Basar. 
according to Rav Safra. Uh, um, that we learned from, that we learned from Basar according, Basar according to Rava. And we learned me Benaya from the, the combination according to Rav Safra. So that means that Mila Shleb is stronger than Taras. Taras is stronger than Shabbos. Mila Shleb is should be done on Shabbos. The Pasuk says, no, Hulavadai. Only the bris itself, not Mila Shleb is Even though I have a Kalvachimah that says yes, the Pasuk tells me no. I need the Kalvachimah to tell me yes. Otherwise, what do you have a Kalvachimah? What, what do you have a Pasuk for? You have to tell me that you can't do it on Shabbos? Of course you can't do it on Shabbos. No. So I have a source that I should be allowed to do it on Shabbos. The Pasuk tells me that I don't. Rashi comes in again, like he did before. He says that this has to do with Asayu uh, Deicha It turns out that Mila is a positive command. However, Yamtif has an Asay and a Laisase. It also says Shabbat Sain, it's a, it's a time of rest. So therefore, an assay of Mila can't push off another assay and the lace assay of, um, of Yom Tif. How do we do it on Shabbos? How do, how do we do a bris on Shabbos if it's Bismana? That's because we had a Pasuk of Bisar or, or Levadi. We had a Pasuk that tells me that you're allowed to. But if it's Shle Bismana, you don't have that Pasuk, it doesn't push it off. Okay, Klalam Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva said the rule before that he argues with Rabbi Lezer that only things that are allowed, uh, that are, need to be performed on Shabbos can be performed on Shabbos. Anything that could have been performed yesterday is not done on Shabbos. Not like Rabbi Lezer. Rabbi Lezer said that you're allowed to prepare the knife on Shabbos. You're allowed to burn the wood, to make the coal, to make, prepare, make the knife, the scalpel, to do the bris. He argues, if it could be done yesterday, then uh, you can't do it on Shabbos. I'm Rav Yudah Merav Lach, Rabbi Akiva. Rav Yudah Merav, Rav Yudah was the Talmud of Rav at the beginning. He says, Allah is like Rabbi Akiva. It's not Nami Gavi Pesach Ki Agavna. We have a similar statement regarding Pesach. Klal Am Rabbi Akiva. Kom Lach Hashem Shal Aseis Merav Shabbos. In a day it's a Shabbos. Regarding the Karben Pesach. If, if the Karben Pesach is on, uh, if the, the 14th of Nisan is on Shabbos. Shechita, she has the last day of Shemir Shabbos, the Shechita of Shabbos. The Shechita, I can't do that on the 13th, so that pushes off Shabbos. But the other things, that doesn't uh, push off Shabbos. Rabbi Yudam Rav, Rav says, Allah is like Rabbi Akiva. So we have two statements that Allah is like Rabbi Akiva in the, the same concept, that anything that could have been done on Erev Shabbos is not done on Shabbos. But I need both of them because I wouldn't have learned one from the other. Yashmin Gabi Mila, if it would have said only by the bris, by us. Hasim Hud Machshirin, Efshir Lasis, Miasmal, Leidachu Shabbos. Over here, the preparations for the bris could have been done yesterday, it doesn't push off Shabbos. The Lekha Karis, because there would be no Karis on the child that doesn't have the bris. When does, it, when does a person that doesn't have a bris have Karis? Karis is the punishment of excision, he's cut off. It's only when he's an adult. But just to push it off from Shabbos, there's no karis. So I would say that, yeah, you didn't prepare. Okay, don't do it today. Aval Pesach, the karis. But Pesach, he only gets one shot. He doesn't bring the karma Pesach. It's very strict. It's karis. Eim alitcha Shabbos. We would say that the preparations themselves should push off Shabbos. Kamash Malan, that they don't. Vyashmin Gabi Pesach. And if you would tell me by Pesach, I would say, well, the Karben Pesach doesn't say 13 times that uh, it's a covenant between God and the Jewish people. Aval Mila, the Nechusala Yud Gimel Brisa is, Bris Mila is so, so uh, intense. It has 13 covenants. I would say that even though I didn't do the preparations beforehand, I should do them on Shabbos. It could have been done before, but I should do them in Shabbos. So Tzricha, it has to tell me that Allah is like Rabbi Akiva that says you don't do them in Shabbos. Okay, there's a new Mishnah here. It says, You're allowed to do all the, the, what's necessary for the bris on Shabbos, which is mayalin. You're allowed to actually do the incision. You're allowed to do the cutting 
of the foreskin. Pyrin is you're allowed to peel away the lower layer of the skin. In other words, what they do is they take the, the skin and they pull it up above the, uh, the top of the, of the organ, corona, and they, um, they pull it up and then they cut it. Um, then the, the, the thicker skin that was on the outside falls back and it's exposed. Only thing is that the lower skin, because it's a double, it's a, it's a full piece of skin. So the, the, the lower layer is still um, attached or still um, spread out over the, over the corona. So it has to be torn a little bit and then it falls back and then the two skins meet underneath the, uh, and then they, they heal, that's where it heals. So that's the priya. That's the priya is the exposing of the top of the organ. Maititzin is you're allowed to pull out the blood it's, uh, with the suction. Nice and less balanus. Uh, it was it was good to, for the blood to come out. So that that's it's, it's good for the healing and all of that. Um, you're allowed to put this bandage on it. Kamein was an herb that was used, probably cumin. It sounds like cumin um, for the healing. If it wasn't ground up, this herb, then you're allowed to chew it to, to make this, what do you call it? Um, poultice. Make a poultice. Uh, they would also um, stir wine and oil together to make this uh, poultice. But they would also stir wine and oil together. But if you didn't do that before Shabbos, then you do that. Uh, you do you do that. You put it on separately. It's a type of medicine, so you, that's therefore you don't do it on Shabbos. You just um, put it on separately on Shabbos. They would have a type of bandage that would be like it would fit the the organ like a like a glove, like it would fit it directly over the organ, and it would make sure that the skin doesn't regrow. You're not allowed to make that glove. But you're allowed to wrap around the longer bandage. That's just, you know, you wrap around. Let's say you didn't prepare it by the place of the bris, the location in the city. So what are you going to do? You have to go get a bandage from somewhere else. So you just put it around your finger. You bring it like as if it's a bandage on your finger. So you try to make some sort of shinoi in the way that you carry it. The Gemara now says we're on top of 133b. One second. Katani Kulu. You just listed everything that you're allowed to do. So why did you start off the Mishnah saying, you're allowed to do everything on Shabbos, and then you list all the items that you're allowed to do. Either say you're allowed to do all the things, or make, give the list, but you don't have to say both. It must be you're coming to add something. If you say you're allowed to do called Sarkimila. You're allowed to do everything. Kol tzarkimil l'asiyimai, what are you coming to add by saying that you're allowed to do all the things? If you just said, the, if you just itemized it, then why do you have to have the general rule? Where it says, very interesting, l'asiyi hadutan rabbanan. It's coming to include something that was taught in a brisa. It says, hamal. Someone that's doing a bris, calls man shuasuk b'mila, as long as he's doing the bris, he's still involved, he's still there with his, with the knife and everything, then, He's doing the bris on Shabbos. Now, he's only allowed to do the bris. He's not allowed to do anything else. So there are certain parts of the foreskin that make the circumcision valid if you, if you cut them off. The other parts that are just extra, make it nicer. Maybe there's a little piece of skin hanging, but it's still, the circumcision is still considered a circumcision, still valid. You know, the halachic um, qualifications for the circumcision would be diff different, possibly, than the medical circumcision. Uh, it needs to be cut a certain amount uh, that it's, you know, how much skin is allowed to be remaining left. That's a, uh, is it considered um, a circumcision if the foreskin still covers over a little part of the, the top of the organ? So it, you have to make sure, if you're doing a bris on Shabbos, you have to make sure that you did the mitzvah. If you didn't do the mitzvah, then you just made a cut and you didn't even do the mitzvah. So you're allowed to go back and finish off the mitzvah. But what about 
if there's other parts of the skin that you're cutting off that the mitzvah is already performed. Those are just the extra parts. You already, if, it, if it's left like this, he's going to be considered that he's circumcised. Are you allowed to go back on Shabbos and do that? The Gemara says, While you're doing this circumcision, you're allowed to cut that as well. Pirish. Let's say you've completed the circumcision, you're all done. So I'll sit in the mac but then you look, take a look, you say, Oi, I left a piece of skin. Circumcision is not valid. You're allowed to go back and cut that. But I'll sit in Shane Makfin. But if it doesn't affect the validity, and you take a look, Shabbos afternoon, you see, Oi, there's more skin there. But oh, it's still valid. So then, Eina Chazer. Then you're not allowed to go back and cut it. Mantana uh, Let me just explain what the Gemara just did for us. Is the Gemara explained that Oisin Kol Tarkimila B'Shabbos means that I'm allowed to do, I'm allowed to cut more than required on Shabbos as long as I didn't separate from doing the circumcision. While I'm still involved, I can even cut, go back and not go back. I can still cut those extra strings. Or pieces of skin that are not even required just to make it nicer, make it more clean or whatever. I'm allowed to do that. That's what the Mishnah meant by Oisin Kol Tzakimila B'Shabbos, even though it then itemized what it is, I'm allowed to go back and, and do this. Oisin Kol Tzakimila, I'm allowed to do everything that's required for the bris is coming to include Tzitzin HaMakvin, Tzitzin Shein HaMakvin, even though it's not Makiv, but I was like Pirish, I was still involved. Gemara says, Mantana Pirishena Chazer. Who's the one that holds that you're not allowed to go back and finish it off if it's not 100% required? Amar Abba Barbachana, Amar Rabbi Yechon, and Rabbi Barbachana says, Rabbi Yechon, Rabbi Shmuel, Bnei Shol, Rabbi Yechon, Mebreke, it's Rabbi Shmuel, the son of Rabbi Yechon, Mebreke, the Tanya. We had this price once. We started in a price of us, Shechol Yis Peshabbos, the 14th day of Nisan, which is the day that the Paschal sacrifice is brought, is, is on a Shabbos. So then you have certain restrictions, what you're allowed to do. Of course, you're allowed to slaughter it, but there's other issues. You're only allowed to skin the animal up until the chest, because once you cut and you skin it until the chest, then you're able to remove the inside organs. And then you remove the inside organs. Once you've done that, you can't go back and skin the rest. You've already stopped the skinning. He's the opinion that holds that once you do the bris, you can't go back and finish it off, even though you left it sort of in middle. But because you fulfilled everything that the, the, the bare requirements, you have to leave it on, on Shabbos. That's the Rebbe Shmuel B'nei Shor B'chem Emreka. V'cham me'em afshit n'eskol, v'cham say, no, you're allowed to finish off the skinning. So they would probably hold it. You're allowed to go back and finish the bris as well. The Gemara says, Mimai, how do you know that this is accurate? Maybe over there, there's no mitzvah to skin the animal, and there's no mitzvah for the, for the animal to look nice after it's already been slaughtered, the blood's been sprinkled, the inner organs are removed. It's not considered a mitzvah that you need to beautify. The animal is laying over there, half the skin on, half the skin off, but it's not a, it's not a mitzvah. However, but over here you did the circumcision, you didn't cut it perfectly, it's a mitzvah. Maybe you're allowed to go back to beautify the mitzvah to make the cut better, even though you're a yaitza. So hachanami. Maybe over here you're allowed to go back and do it. Maybe Rabbi Shmuel ben Eishu Rabbechen Mebreka would not say it's prohibited. The Tanya was taught in Rabbi Zakili Manveu. This is my God and I will beautify him. That's what we said in the uh, song when we went through the sea. We said, this is my God and I will beautify him. Right? It's not the fun of the mitzvahs. You should beautify God with the mitzvahs. What, what does that mean? I say the fun of sukkah na. You should do it before God. You should make a beautiful sukkah. Lulav na. You should have a beautiful lulav. Shayfer na. Beautiful shayfer. Tzitzis na. The tzitzis should be nice. Sefer Torah na. The sefer Torah has to be beautiful. Kasa by l'shmai. And you should write it properly. Bidyayna with beautiful ink. Kulmus na. Look at that. Even though the kolmus doesn't go into the doesn't go into the sefer Torah, but even the tools that need to be need to be nice. It's a big chiddush. The lavlar uman. This means the scribe. I guess should be a, uh, a professional. The karche b'shirayin 
It should be, even the mantle needs to be beautiful. Abishal Laimer van Veo, Abishal says a different shot than on Veo. He says, Evidemelai, Anivahu. You should be, behave similar to God. Mahu Chanan Racham, just like God is gracious and compassionate. Afata Hey Chanan Racham. You should also be gracious and compassionate. Basically, our question was maybe Rabbi Shmuel Bnei Shabbat Shalom would tell me that you have to go back on Shabbos and finish the bris, even though the mitzvah was performed. Elam Ravashi Amani Rabbi Yaisi Ravashi says it's going according to Rabbi Yaisi the Tanan. Rabbi Yaisi says if witnesses see the moon, so if the moon was very clear, in other words, to see that it's a new a new moon, then. If it was very clear, then it can be assumed that maybe the Bezdin themselves saw it and someone already told them. But if it wasn't so clear and witnesses saw, then you may have to make sure that you go to tell them. However, the first opinion goes like this. Whether the moon was very clear, whether it wasn't clear, you mechal Shabbos. Rabbi Yaisi says, no, if it was seen clearly, you're not mechal Shabbos. In other words, witnesses need to travel on Shabbos. If it's so clear that probably the Bezdin uh, already knows about it, then you don't travel on Shabbos. What are we saying? The Rabbi Yitz is saying you don't have to do anything extra on Shabbos. So therefore, the circumcision that was already kosher, you don't go back and do anything else. So it's a, you, know, you have to be limited on Shabbos. Mimai, how do you know that this would really be Rabbi Yitz? Dilmat kan lekam Rabbi Yitz yasam lein Shabbos lidches. Over there, you didn't even start violating Shabbos. Maybe over here where you started to violate Shabbos, you're allowed to go back and finish. It's a different story. Maybe Rabbi Yesi would agree that you're allowed to go back over here. Okay, I should probably leave it over here for today. We're up to Ella Aminar, we're halfway down the page.